A unique form of classical theatre whose origins can be traced to about six centuries ago, it has survived in its original form even as modern Japan has moved fast ahead into a sophisticated technological age. The No Theatre which comes down to us through the 14th, 15th and 16th centuries known as the Muromachi period in Japanese history is ranked among the greatest artistic achievements of mankind and is a distinctive kind of theatre. This type of drama may also be described as a superb synthesis of song, dance and acting. Masks, song and dance forms are used in the highly stylized tradition of the No. The slow, fluent movements and the restrained diction are unique to No. These special features make the No theatre different from any other seen anywhere else in the world. In ancient times, no plays were performed on open-air stages, erected at the sites of shrines, and were performed in conjunction with the sacred dancers known as the Kagure. Open-air performances of the No even today remind us of its early religious connections. This is a No performance in a Shinto shrine situated in the historic city known as Kamakura. Historical evidence shows that from its inception No plays were performed on an open-air stage, even up to the late 19th or early 20th century. Daytime performances used sunlight, while nighttime performances were illuminated by candlelight, torch, flares, or bonfires. This next frame shows how modern theatres have the traditional no stages built within them. This snow stage, which you see just now, is based on the model of the traditional no stage built in his palace by the Shogun Tokugawa, who ruled during the Edo period of Japanese history. The large and spreading roof, designed according to ancient temple architecture, inspires strange feelings of devotion and unique grandeur. The entire no stage is built of a kind of wood known as hinoki or Japanese cypress. The main stage called butai spreads right out towards the audience giving the stage a three-dimensional appearance. Four square pillars placed at four corners of the stage create the space for the main performers. A strip of pebbled ground at the foot of the stage separates the stage from the auditorium. This strip functions to distance the modern equipped seating of the auditorium from the stage making the latter appear an independent unit. Behind the main acting area is a space known as the Atosha, meant for the four-man orchestra who accompany the play. This orchestra is referred to as the Hayashi. The musicians, singers and others in a performance enter through the small door at the extreme left. On the right of the stage is a bridge connecting the stage and the green room. This bridge is called the Hashigakari. Between this bridge and the auditorium are three pine trees planted in vases called Matsu. They are placed at intervals in such a way as to create an illusion of extra depth. The no actor uses this bridge to enter the stage and for his return to the green room.
On the wall at the back of the stage is painted a large pine tree, also referred to as Matsu. This is the only permanent backdrop to all no theatres, and all no plays use this for its background. This huge pine tree towering above the emptiness of the rest of the no stage suggests grandeur, beauty and a background of depth. The simplicity of the floor made of cypress wood polished to a mirror-like smoothness is said to reflect the pure mind of the man who has attained to the states of dhyana or a trance. The spotlights that are familiar in the conventional European theatre are never to be seen in the no theatre. Instead, a single electric light is used. At the beginning of a no performance, the singers and instrumentalists of the no play enter with a restrained step and movement, and in accordance with Japanese tradition, take their places on the stage. Each one prepares for his particular function. A short time after the music and singing has begun, this first actor emerges from the green room along the bridge to the main stage. He advances to the front of the stage and with great restraint in his manner of speech, announces to the audience the role he plays. The number of actors in a no play is very small. Normally, only two actors are needed to bring to life the deeper essence of the play. These two actors are known as the shite and waki. The shite represents the chief character, while the waki plays the supporting role. Sure is the term for the third supporter found in some no plays and sometimes consists of two persons. Child characters known as Kokata are played by children, usually drawn from no actor families and trained in the tradition from almost the age of three or six. <laughs> Women do not take part. The character in a no play, although derived from real life, represents the essence of that character, the actor transforming it into a thing of beauty. It is never a literal representation. Accordingly, it is an accepted argument in no theory that a woman's character can be better portrayed by a man than by a woman. A woman is merely a woman. Tsiami the theorist of the No Theatre, who is the counterpart of Bharatamuni in India and Aristotle in the West, has said that the essence of womanhood can be more ably created by the male actor. Dancing forms one of the major components of the No and hence much effort is focused on movement and gesture. Often the environment of the No is created through the spoken word, through movement and by expressions of the face. For example, to indicate that a long distance has been traversed, the actor makes only a single circular movement. A special technique employed is for the actor to stand still and describe the places he has travelled to, thus indicating the length of his journey. A no artist has dedicated his whole life for the preservation of this tradition. This dedication is a duty devolved upon him by the tradition itself. There are five traditional schools of no. In Japan, they are known as Kita, 
Komparu, Kongo, Hosho and Kanze. The Kanze school is considered to be the oldest. Mr. Kyokashu Kanze, the present Grand Master of the Kanze no family and leader of the school says, I was four years when I started learning the art of the no. Ziyami, who is considered the founder of the no tradition, began at the age of six. A child of four finds it difficult to understand the meanings of the words. But they have to learn the difficult ancient words taught them by the teachers. When my father said, ah, I repeated it after him saying, ah, without knowing its meaning. When he said, e, I too said, e. it is a mere role learning. We did not know their meanings. But that is the method of teaching this art in the traditional no families. Today there are no artists who do not actually come from no families. They begin learning at the stage of higher education, otherwise when they have left school. The stories which are depicted may be classified as religious, mythological, chronicles, fables, historical and contemporary and they are derived from Japanese, Chinese or Indian sources. The plot selected from these stories by the writer of the no play is a very simple one. The central character may be a god or goddess, a warrior or a lady of high birth or a noble from the aristocracy. On another occasion, the chief character may be a madman or madwoman characters depicting demons, spirits and other imaginary beings. The thoughts and feelings of humanity is the common theme of all these kinds of plays. In the no play called Sumitagawa, a mother is in search of her lost son. She learns that he is dead. While she is seated near the son's grave, performing the rites for the dead, the spirit of the lost son appears before her. She tries to embrace him, but he disappears. In the no play called Dojo Ji, the spirit of a woman driven by love for the monk enters his temple in the guise of a dancer and obtains permission to dance in a religious ceremony. That night, staying over at the temple, she assumes the fearful form of a snake and hides in the huge temple bell. The monks of the temple, reciting psalms in praise of the Buddha, are able to expel the snake from the precincts of the temple. The evolution of a plot as seen in the Greek or European traditions of theatre and the Sanskrit drama of India are not seen in the no play, which arranges its events in its own special and simple way, attempting to supply the audience with a series of clues through the path of the theatre to a sense of deep spiritual beauty. According to Sanskrit dramatic theory, the stages of the evolution of plot are fivefold, Aramba or Overture, Yatna statement, Praptyasha development, Niyataapti conclusion and Palagama coda. In all these stages, dramatic conflict plays a prominent role. But although in a no play, there is a beginning, middle and an end, unlike in other dramatic traditions of the world, the idea of conflict is totally absent. This makes a no play a unique form. In fact, it is so unlike what is termed drama in Greece or in India, or in the modern West, that people ask whether drama is the right name for this kind of theatre. We do, of course, go through some kind of theatrical experience when we witness a no play. This experience certainly gives us an aesthetic delight, which is at the same time a moment of concentration and peace of mind, a moment of meditation. 
One of the important principles in the appreciation of a no play is the concept of yugen. Yugen seems to resemble the concept of aesthetic delight called rasa in Indian poetics. It originally meant indirect but suggestive statement. Just as in poetic statement, what is unsaid carries more meaning than what is said. In the no, what is implied by a movement or gesture is more significant than what it directly means. And this is what causes the aesthetic delight. Just as Indian aestheticians declare that aesthetic enjoyment is comparable to communion with God or Brahman, so Ziyami, who is a theorist of the no, describes Yugen as elevating us above the mundane world and bringing us to a state comparable with a transcendental bliss that comes of the realization of the impermanence of things. A person who sees a no play is believed to leave the theatre in a state of mental tranquility, like one who has attained a state of trance after meditation. The objective of a no performance is to imbue the spectator's mind with a calm and tranquility, which is known to Oriental aesthetics as Shantarasa the sentiment of peace and quietude. The Zen Buddhist philosophy is intimately and subtly woven into the no play. This is its grandest achievement. It is not only aesthetic enjoyment which a spectator should expect from seeing a no play. There are two important things one should expect from a no performance. One is aesthetic enjoyment. But there is something more important and that is to focus the attention of the spectator towards spiritual, transcendental beauty. This is a great concept that has been passed down from generation to generation in the no tradition. The no play is intimately connected with the worship of Amida Buddha that prevails in Japan. It is also connected with the tradition of Zen Buddhism. In fact, Zen Buddhism, which saw its early beginnings in Japan in the Muromachi period, has not only influenced the no play. The Japanese arts of poetry, painting, gardening and many other arts are imbued with the spirit of Zen. The characteristic features of these arts are their simplicity and their spirit of restraint and discipline. The essential qualities of these arts are the absence of decorativeness, their brevity, their understatement, their pleasantness and charm, and their refinement. It is believed that these qualities are derived from the ethic of restraint inspired by Zen philosophy, which is the fountain source of the no artist's inspiration. In the tea ceremony brought from China to Japan during this period by the Buddhist saint Aisai, the Buddhist concept of meditation lie enshrined. In fact, no has a very strong energy and a very strong um, dynam dynamism that informs the performance of no. And uh, this is perhaps one of the most uh, important aspects of no and something that an audience should be aware of in seeing a no performance. Part of this dynamism comes from the very posture which the, the no actor assumes when he's on stage. There is no time when the body is at rest. The body is always very straight and very forward. If I show you from the side, you can see how the body is not like, should not be back like this instead forward and so this creates a certain energy on the stage just because the actor is always very far forward and also because he pushes a lot from the lower part of the back pulls out from his his rear end here and so the body is very far forward and creates this sort of energetic space Then the hands are often in this particular posture. However, 
Depending on the character, maybe the hands will be a little bit lower, sometimes a little bit higher. And this is called, in any case, this is called the basic posture, which is used in no. Now, movement, in order to move, you have to, of course, walk. And so any sort of walking movement, you know there's a term called suri ashi, sliding feet. And it is the term which is used for the sort of unique walking movement. And this is where the feet are, are slid against the floor. And only at the very end are they picked up. body from the hips on up, a very straight. Uh, the vocabulary of the dance is something which we call kata or movement patterns and these are specific patterns which the dancer often uses. For example, this particular pattern, a pointing pattern and then opening. This is a very sort of common pattern. Now it doesn't have any specific meaning. Sometimes it takes on meaning depending on what the chorus is saying. For example, the actor often uses a fan, might be pointing at something in the distance, a river, following it, and then this opening pattern as he watches, looks at the, at the river. But in fact, many times it doesn't have specific movement. So this is a pattern that is used constantly and returns to it very often. And it is non-mimetic, it doesn't have any specific meaning, uh, but is sort of an extension of the feeling which is created in the, the actor. Actors who do not wear masks try hard to confine their facial expressions to the minimum. Throughout the performance, their aim is to retain a single expression with great restraint. This histrionic technique helps the actor to convey imagery with great precision and clarity, brevity and conciseness. The actors who do wear masks make use of gesture to express such emotions of anger and joy. Sorrow and mourning are expressed this way. A special feature of No is the mask, made with great artistic maturity derived from a long tradition. Principles of the Zen tradition are that the simple artistic expression convey deep spiritual meanings. These masks differ from masks used elsewhere in the world in their fine expression of a spiritual quality. One of the outstanding creations of this art are the masks depicting women. The striking feature of such masks is that they express no emotion or distinct posture, nor the interrelations between characters. Unlike certain other no masks, where the posture is easily distinguishable, the female mask depicts a peculiar depth inspiring spiritual delight. This near white mask does not seem to express any particular emotion, yet with it an endless variety of meaning could be expressed. When the no mask is placed in a straight posture, it is called teresu. When it is placed in the teresu posture, it expresses joy or delight. When it is placed in a forward leaning posture, it is called kumori and expresses sadness or grief. え、気持ちが沈んでいる時とか。よく日本の言葉座に、え、能面のような顔っていう言葉もございますけども、あれはまた逆でございまして、能面ほどですね、これほどシンプルに彫り上げてあるわけですね。ですから非常にこう静止し
This mask is called Hanya. It is the face of a demon, rather that of a demoness. According to popular belief in our society, demons are not classed as male or female, but the no demon mask makes the distinction. This is done to enhance aesthetic enjoyment. As an example, we may cite the case of the masks in the no place called Ao no Ui and Dojoji. In these plays, a female demon mask is used to symbolize hatred and jealousy. It is also mixed with grief and expresses a complex mental state. When you place it in the Teresu posture, it expresses anger. Intense anger is shown by placing it in the Kumori posture. Terrace position stand for the anger. 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 Some of the other masks are those of mysterious animals and demonic spirits, young and old women and men, mad women and other characters. The wood used for the making of these masks is also the Japanese cypress known as Hinoki. Masks are worn by the shite who plays the chief role, and the shite tsure, who is the actor in the supporting role. Actors who play young men or warriors and children do not wear masks. These artists, who have preserved the art of the no through many generations, show a great respect for these masks, revealing the discipline characteristic of their long hereditary tradition. This discipline has helped them to preserve these masks used as far back as four centuries ago until the present. We treat the masks so respectfully and devotedly because of two special reasons. One reason is our attachment to the character depicted by the mask. The other is our desire to enter into the character which we treat as a traditional duty and responsibility. That is why we show respect and devotion towards the mask. Another thing that should be stated is that these masks are about 350 years old. That is another reason for our respect. We never touch them in the middle. We hold them always in this manner. The properties used on the no stage are also very simple. They are not naturalistic and have been created with specific characteristics suited for the plays in which they are used. Props for use on the stage are brought in by special theater attendants known as Kokan, right in the presence of the audience, emphasizing their need for them on the stage. There is a special way of using these props on the stage, very peculiar to the No tradition. This is how, in the No play called Taniko, the child, Machuwaka, is thrown down a hill by a group of pilgrims. A sub-stage or platform on the stage with leaves and trees on it to suggest the hill and the forest where the event takes place. This stage prop depicts a water cart in the play Matsukathi. The fan has a prominent place in the No play. In addition to being used as a prop, it has also a peculiar use in acting, adding to its charm. Mr. Yoshihiro of the Kanze school explains that they have come down from generation to generation and are so well preserved that they can be used even today. These fans are from 300 to 400 years old. 
and they are still used as sacred objects. The costumes are also an attractive feature of the No. The Shite, or the central character, wears an extremely colourful and brilliant costume and mask. In some No plays, the Shite Tsure too is dressed in colourful costumes. The Waki, who is a supporting actor, does not usually wear bright costumes. These costumes, in the possession of the Kanze school, are over 300 years old. They are still used in the No performances. The beautiful designs are woven with expensive thread. Some of the costumes are made of rich cloth printed with attractive designs. The No plays being staged are those which have been written in the 14th, 15th or 16th centuries. The language of these plays is peculiar to the time they were written. Hence, the No spectator usually reads the script while watching and it is usually in prose or verse. The verse is sung and the prose is chanted rhythmically with a poetic quality which is understood even by those who do not know the language. The group of singers in the No play are either six or twelve in number. They sing to the rhythm of the dance and supplement the lines of a soloist. This is just a brief section from a melodic style of singing. You can see there are very clear pitches. At the same time, there's a very strong voice quality, and that also gives energy to the space and makes, when this is sung as background for the dancer, it makes the space very alive. There's even a more dynamic quality, or a, what I could call a strong dynamic singing style, where pitch is not so important. So these two kinds, the one I just demonstrated was melodic, this time the more dynamic singing style. As you can see, it has pitch. The pitch is not so clearly defined, and so uh, it has a very sort of strong, very strong presence. And so it is used in plays uh, which uh, the actor usually uh, has a very dynamic quality to the performance. Now, I would like to demonstrate two different kinds of dances. One where the soft singing, I will be doing the singing and the dance. Uh, one with the soft singing, another with the more dynamic uh, singing quality. <laughs> Now the next dance is a much more dynamic Oh, 
Only four musical instruments are used. The flute, a small drum, a medium-sized drum, and a large drum beaten with two sticks. These instruments are played by dedicated musicians who have been trained and have remained within the tradition, generation after generation. We actually appreciate the slow movement of the no only when we reflect upon the slow music and the long meters used. Unlike the musical symphonies created with the instruments we are accustomed to, the music of no is not designed for entertainment. However, it creates rhythms which accompany the movements of the actors or underscore the special situations in the script. The music of no can never be enjoyed outside the theatrical performance. The music is so intimately and finely synchronized with the heightening and lowering of the emotions of the play and with the tempo of the play's life on the stage. There is a little tradition closely bound with the tradition of no. This is the Kyogen theater. Kyogen is performed on the same stage as the no and the tradition is to sandwich it between two no plays or two parts of a single no play so as to provide an interlude. Kyogen too is ancient going back to a date of about 600 or more years. It too has developed together with the no tradition passed down the generations in hereditary pupillary succession. Kyogen is today performed by two schools, the Isumi and the Okura, which can be traced back to medieval times. Kyogen is comic and is intended to bring the spectator back to his real natural environment after the trance-like experiences of the No. Kyogen is farce, believed to provide cathartic relief from the deep and disturbing effects on the spectator and the mystic moods of contemplation of impermanence that the No derives from its Zen vision of life. Unlike in the No, the plot of the Kyogen is simple and light. The No is concerned with gods and ghosts and stories of their previous existences, but Kyogen brings us face to face with the comic aspects of the real human beings who live about us and within us. Some of the Kyogen plays do have characters of gods and spirits, but they, like us, are not only mortal, but face the same trials and travails. The humorous conflicts that rise between master and servant, father-in-law and son-in-law, uncle and aunt, husband and wife, are often the subject of Kyogen plays. What you see now is a performance of Kyogen, provided as an interlude to the performance of two no plays staged in the historic city of Kamakura. This Kyogen play is called Yashimatsu and is being performed by Mr. Manasaku Namura, the Grand Master of the Isumi Kyogen School and one of his pupils. In this play, a robber from the hills snatches a woman's travelling bag and runs away. The woman who chases after the thief gets possession of his spear by some ruse and not only frightens him to surrender her bag but runs away with his clothes as well. As in the No, women's roles in Kyogen are also played by men, but these women characters do not wear masks. However, the Kyogen actor informs his spectators that he is playing a woman's role by wearing a turban-like headgear 
with two symbolic pigtails that fall from the sides of his brow. In some Kyogen plays, masks are worn by certain characters. The acting style of the Kyogen is very close to the naturalistic. The stories are developed in the play through dialogue of two or three characters. This dialogue is in prose, often written in the spoken language. The masks in Kyogen are only used for non-human or usually quite ugly characters. We do not normally use masks in Kyogen. We only use the face itself. We don't use any makeup either. So masks are rather unusual in Kyogen, whereas in No, they're used for almost all leading characters. This mask is called the God of Happiness mask. It's used for the one character, uh, the God of Happiness, who brings happiness to people. This, was, this is a nobori hige, which is used for some animals and many different spirits, basically. We used it recently for the lion in A Midsummer Night's Kyogen. This is the kentoku, which is used for animals in Kyogen. It's used for cows and horses and various other animals, and sometimes for spirits, even for mushroom, in one case. This is the, the most commonly used demon mask. And we've talked, the no people talk about how the expression can change. This one's the most obvious. He looks kind of light and even perplexed when he's turned up this way, but he can look mean when he's turned down and angry, yes, and stronger. This is a mask for a, an older woman in Kyogen. You can see that she's not beautiful like the women in No are, uh, but she's very nice. Although No and Kyogen have traveled together down through the ages, being performed on the same stage, they have developed along two different lines. That a person who attends a No play does not do so with the intention of seeing a Kyogen play is a fact that should be emphasized, because Kyogen has become so much a part of the No tradition. What are your ideas about No plays? We are living in a society which is moving to a very fast rhythm. But the rhythm of a no play is very different. We can find in it much aesthetic delight. I too think in the same way. For us who are living in this highly turbulent society, it is a novel experience to view something which soothes the mind. Besides, there is a discipline brought on us when we view a no play. In the no play, we encounter things which we do not meet with in ordinary life. Especially the no play takes us back to a very ancient past. I too agree with that. We enter the world of the supernatural which we do not experience in our daily life. Even in music, what we usually get is fast-moving music. But in no place we hear chants which soothe the heart and enter us into a trance-like state. That is why my interest in no place increases. I like it because it makes us think very highly of our culture. Actually, today Japan has moved away from traditional things and has become used to a modernized way of life. I am proud that even in such a modernized society, this traditional heritage survives. No is closely associated with Buddhism. Therefore, both in witnessing or in acting in no place, one finds a mental satisfaction and comfort. I prefer to see it performed in solitary places rather than in crowded places like this. Actually, it is like a meditation. We, whose daily lives are spent in a fast-moving society like Japan's, we find little time to think of this kind of thing, especially young people of our generation. But I have a great respect for our traditional things. And what I think you have here, you see, is perhaps a unique example in the history of world religion, where instead of drama arising out of ritual, 
You have ritual, perhaps, arising out of drama, in other words, a transformation of a secular theatre into a ritual theatre. And therefore what I think you've got is a transformation of a theatrical, of a popular theatrical tradition into almost an elitist but ritual tradition in which the purpose of the drama is to exemplify Zen aesthetics. And that, I think, has something to do with Japanese religiosity itself. There was a survey done not so long ago where Japanese were asked which religion they claim to belong to. And the remarkable result was that something like 90% of all the people interviewed said they had no religion. But obviously we think of Japan as being a religious country and it seems that what they meant was we don't have a religion in the sense of something we practice on a particular day in a particular way. But I think religion pervades the aesthetics of the whole thing. I mean everything we think of as Japanese symbols of beauty be it in pottery, be it in flower arrangement, be it in no masks, are all Zen in origin. And maybe that's where the Zen lies. Not Zen as a monk sitting and meditating in front of a blank wall, but Zen in that appreciation of the fleeting, transient, evanescent beauty that can just be briefly caught. Oh, <laughs> 